This is the Jumper T-Lite version two. It's only $60 and it comes with everything that you need. From hall sensor gimbals, proper switches, edge TX, Express LRS internal, as well as a multi-protocol option, and you also get a module bay at the back. Now it does a lot of things, but is it the best budget radio under $100? I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV, and here you're gonna get everything you need to know in five minutes. Jumper did send me the radio for review, which was quite surprising seeing as I really wasn't a fan of the T-Pro. So fair play to Jumper for being a good sport. I've had the original T-Lite since it was released in January, 2021. The original was very popular because it was the first budget radio that wasn't crap, and it set a benchmark as to what a budget radio should be. So what do you get when you buy the Jumper T-Lite? What set the original Jumper T-Lite apart from other budget radios is that it came with an internal multi-protocol module, allowing you to connect to all kinds of different RC links. It had hall sensor gimbals, a nano transmitter module bay, and open TX with a screen. These were unheard of at the time for budget radios. This time, Jumper have included Express LRS as an option and also reworked the internal electronics to support higher outputs on that external module bay. Normally when you buy a radio, you do need to buy batteries and an SD card and download the SD card contents off the internet to put it on the radio. But it came with an SD card, so that saves a lot of beginners the hassle of trying to get that up and running. After plugging in the battery, all I needed to do was flash my Express LRS configuration, turn off the ADC filter, turn off the external module bay, and then change the trainer setting to master. I also had to add my switches to the mixers tab so all my different outputs worked. And after doing all that, it was ready to go and time to fly. Connecting up to the T-Lite to the computer to play sim, there were no issues there and it worked immediately. It's very capable and much better than trying to learn to fly with an Xbox controller. On the Express LRS version, one thing that you do get is you can use the radio's Bluetooth function to connect wirelessly to your computer, which is something you can't do with the JP401 or multi-protocol version. After heading out to my local flying spot, I managed to get in several packs, and this is when the gremlins of the T-Lite started to come back to me. The ergonomics aren't suitable for someone like myself with fat fingers who pinches or has a hybrid grip. Now, if you thumb, then you should find that the ergonomics work really well. I just couldn't deal with not having a comfortable hold of the radio. See, the issue I have is how I like to position my hands when holding the radio. I have my middle fingers on the top of the shoulder, so my thumbs and pointer finger can hold it in a hybrid grip. Now, this isn't an issue that is isolated to the Jumper T-Lite. I have the very same issue on my TX-16S, which comes in at about $400. And what I've done is I've had to remove the shoulder switches on that to make it more comfortable. Comment below with how you hold the radio or am I just the only Fruit Loop that has this issue? So how can I solve this? What I decided was if I swap the two position and the three position switch on the left hand side, it would be more comfortable. So I opened up the tea light, swapped the switches around and found that this was a way more comfortable way of holding and working the radio. Now you may be wondering why I just don't use the three position for arming and disarming. Well, that's because Express LRS requires a two position switch on high and using the three position switch A won't work, but it also does me out of the additional functionality I can get from a three position switch. So, so far it's stacking up to be a pretty compelling prospect for 60 bucks. And this is where I found some issues with the pricing. On AliExpress, I found it to range anywhere from 60 to $75 on Banggood, it was $88. If you're a beginner to FPV, you probably aren't sure which you should choose. Do you go with the JP4 and one, or do you go with the Express LRS version? Well, in my mind, the multi-protocol version, the JP4 and one, is useless if you're new to FPV. Most bind and fly drones these days come with an Express LRS option, which you're gonna get more range and better control with Express LRS than you do with FreeSky, which is the main RC link that you'd use the multi-protocol radio to connect to. Unless you already have a bunch of drones running FreeSky, you're best to start with Express LRS anyway. You'll still get the module bay if you eventually want to switch to Crossfire, Tracer or Ghost, so you're going to get the best of both worlds. All up, I do believe the T-Lite is the best radio under $100, and one of my qualifiers for under $100 means that if I go into a store to buy it and hand over a $100 bill, I'm expecting to get change. 
When I asked the question on Facebook, everyone said spend a little bit more money and buy a better radio. Now you can absolutely do that. If you've got exactly $100 to spend on a radio, even though it's 20% more, spending an extra 20 bucks is going to get you a lot more in a radio. But if you want more than five to $10 change, with your $100, then the T-Lite is a compelling argument. While I believe the T-Lite is a great option for beginners, you're probably wondering about how to choose the best radio for you. If you are, watch this video here where I go through how you can work out what is the best radio for you in FPV. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.